Welcome to the Trading Lounge and the Day Ahead Report and here we're looking at the uh, US 30, the Dow Jones on a 20 minute chart and um, as you know we've been following this particular wave count uh, up from the uh, the lows just below the 12,500 through here and this is pretty much how it sort of looks like we're looking at um, at the move up through here as an impulse wave which is five waves um, but it's not really quite there yet as a um, impulse wave it still could be counted as a corrective wave in terms of that uh, where the one is here that would be the a wave the b wave here and the c wave which is always in five waves would be the one the two the three the four and the five so realistically that can uh, certainly be an ABC rally and we could see further downside uh, from that I wouldn't worry too much about this just here because um, that would just be expected to come off at um, at the 12,800 so uh, I'll give that time to find its feet and it also can be the wave four from he from here as well so we can bring in that wave uh, what that wave five to here and wave three to here and uh, wave four um, in at this stage here which would be a 38.2 retracement level from the bottom of wave to here back up to here so that comes in around the 12.7 there as such uh, so um, yeah that's all good there um, but even so we'll still be looking for one more wave up through to here to, and that wave five here would be about the same length as wave one here because the extension was in wave three so it's not like we're going to see it very high up here if it's going to be the case um, and then even once that's occurred there then we would see a 61.8 retracement level of that whole five wave structure but having that five waves in through to here that fifth wave coming in through to here does give us an impulse wave to the upside and what that means is that we would have a 61.8 retracement level it may not come that far back but um, we need to work with the outside first so um, yeah back to there but it would give us five waves up here so that would give us an A and a B and a C wave back through to here and then would move um, higher um, to the upside there um, but that said um, the the uh, this this five if this is just a two hour chart and this is on the S&P 500 now sorry about that but uh, the Dow Jones is the same as well uh, in that um, you know if if even if we do get five waves up through here as a wave uh, we can still call that wave one or an a wave to that point you know so we have five waves up but what that will give us would give us three waves back and then another five up through here so um, but just to point out that even though we're looking for a wave one here and a wave two back and a wave three to the upside um, just still it's important to track both wave counts and not get blind by our own uh, thoughts so um, we need to include both counts I know that can be a little bit confusing and it's nice to be confident in one particular area but um, you know we've got, we've got to work with uh, with inside the parameters and but look you know five waves up through here will give us um, three waves back and then another five up here so five here will give us another five and for short-term trading that's that's a pretty um, you know it's a pretty good thing so um, just a little bit more patience to, to work out this here but also the same thing as well is that um, you know for each trend there's a beginning a middle and an end and the beginning is the building process and then in the middle and then the ending process uh, through to here so uh, the ending process is very much like the building process process um, and um, yeah so look it's not going to go very far so we can expect um, you know corrections uh, and choppy price actions to come and they normally come on the Wednesdays and Thursdays however the uh, Thursday uh, this week we've got um, Thanksgiving holiday in the US on the Thursday so um, yeah we can expect low volumes um, on the Wednesday um, and yeah so we'll see them come back on the Friday and hopefully we'll see a push up from uh, from the um, from the from the Friday alrighty um, moving along a little bit um, look most of the other markets are um, pretty much the same as well this is the um, this is the S&P 500 here again look it's pretty pretty simple in terms of up for one and back for two and then the third wave the one the two the three the four and the five for the top of the third wave there so the fourth wave unfolding uh, now through here 
Um, I'm, I could have this third wave wrong in here, and this could actually be the top of the wave one here, but look, it's not really going to make any much difference because we're only going to see, you know, if, uh, uh, you know, a smaller push up through here, then a correction anyway, or we're going to see a correction from here. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's all the sort of, there's no large moves going to be uh, coming into play and, and also supported by the uh, US holiday coming up as well. So the European markets are pretty much the same as well. Um, when we're looking at the uh, the UK market here, just put it on here so it's a bit clearer, we can actually see the, the five waves is a bit is a bit um, is much the same uh, as well. But we've got this little move in here, which would be the wave one, the wave two, and then the third wave would be the one, the two, the three, the four, and the five. But on the cash market, it may appear that this would be the wave one and wave two into here, or this one to here because of the 24-hour trading uh, scenario. So, um, you know, this is definitely the third wave. It does look like a good fourth wave and the fifth wave through to here. So um, after five wave structure through here, then we can expect a... Um, a, a corrective move back, 50-60% of this move through here. So we can see that probably coming into play now um, and then a move further to the upside. And the DAX is the same as well. Uh, it's just a two-hour chart here, and you know that uh, uh, 72 is is, um, is a strong number, and it's coming up into the 72 area there. So you know it's it's a good idea to start taking profit into this area. A, a move below. Let's just go in and have a look at this one here because. Um, yeah, this is the structure we've been sort of following the same as the other markets as well. Um, I mean, the idea is to really take sort of profit into the 72 area, but also taking profit into the 71, 72 is, is the go. Um, a move below the 71.50 here, as I wrote this morning, is uh, not a good look because we start getting overlapping wave structures from here. And um, uh, so that's, um, yeah, so that would be the exit point from there. The Australian market too would be struggling at the 4,400 as well. Um, there wouldn't be anything sort of new in that. Um, uh, and that was kind of expected as well as yesterday we we're pointing out that um, uh, even with these structures, if we took this as wave one here and wave two to here, then the wave three would be into here. This would be a wave four here. And we'll be looking for a wave five up through here. But look, even if it does push up, it's not going to push very far. Then we're going to have another corrective pattern across here. So, you know, just a bit of patience if you if you prefer to go along because you would need that uh, 44 as the uh, as the support. And that will take some time to build from that process there. Um, OK, let's have a look at uh, the at the um, at the commodities. Okay, with gold here, it looks like we've got our five waves in at the top through here, so we'll be looking at a 61.8 retracement level, which would come in at um, 1720 uh, uh, area here for, uh, for, for this here. So we can see that um, this particular move that's coming down through here is still quite, is coming down quite sharp through here. So this would be a, like a little third wave in here. So we'll see a consolidation at the, uh, at the uh, 1720 here. Um, and then we should see a bounce um, off this area through here for a B wave coming back up and then a C wave down through here. There is a little gap down here that's important and technically it can come down uh, that far as well. But if it breached the 1710 here, then we've obviously got a, um, a stronger move to the downside. But uh, and, and in, in saying that, um, let's just have a look in the, at the larger picture here for a second. Um, this picture here. So we were looking on the four hour chart here, we're looking for wave one up through here, wave two to come back here. Then we're looking for wave one and then wave two to come back and then continue moving to the upside there. The um, the, the real trade in, in confirming that situation would be finding support on top of group one here, the 1730. Uh, so um, that's not quite in place just yet. And we also knew that the move up through here had to be, uh, would. Um, have to be corrected anyway. Um, so anyway, we'll see it um, moving. It's developing a range now from that high to that that low to that high. And we'll see the bottom of this range here. 
and that little gap is a bit of a concern there. We'll see how that um, that pans out. The other scenario for this too would be that uh, this wave two would be a little bit larger in terms of an A wave down to here, a B wave back up, and a C wave down to the 1700 here. And in that case, uh, the 1700 would really need to play out as um, as, as the support in, in that area there as well. But let's see how the volume comes back in after um, after the U.S. holiday on the uh, on the Thursday, and uh, this would be the. Uh, uh, sort of the same for sort of copper as well um, for the base metals. Uh, there'll be some sort of relationship there. I was looking at this, just reworking this wave count that we we're looking at yesterday. Um, it does count quite nicely as a corrective wave back up through here in terms of an of an A wave in three, a B in three, and a larger three here, and then the C wave up through here being the top here, or one more top in here as well. So what we can say here, I guess, is that we could say that um, you know as long as the market really stays above the uh, 61.8 retracement level from this this point here if that's in through here so here so we could say that um, the base metal market is still positive um, uh, as long as it stays above the 345 and that was the the old figure that we were looking at before it was the balance line within this correction here so uh, let's see how that retest um, comes into the 50 here um, but with the uh, with the gold market down, um, then this is likely to follow as well, and it will also depend on on the US dollar as well. Let's just have a quick look at that while we're here. So, with the US dollar, we know that um, uh, we've got this high coming in through here, and we're looking at this coming down as as a uh, as a wave one and a wave two to come back, which uh, normally pulls back the 61.8 percent of the uh, of the move down. But um, you know we don't really want it finding support above the 81.30 here. That's still a bit high there. So anyway, let's just see how that um, that pans out through here. It does look like a corrective rally at this stage through here. Um, but let's just give it a bit of uh, a, a bit of chance to um, you know to, to move up here and uh, and then see if it comes back down and locks under here. So still early days just yet. Um, we'll just see, but this this eight this uh, eighty one here will be a line in the sand for um, for many markets, all the commodities, of course, uh, and also stocks, and uh, also the euro, which we'll have a look at now. Okay, looking at the U.S. dollar here for um, for every level of support through here now would add a positive bias to the U.S. dollar and a negative bias to the euro and. Uh, and other markets as well. So uh, finding support on here would be an easy thing to identify. Uh, as you can see that there's um, quite a lot of uh, resistance through here, this block of supply through here. So you can imagine if the, um, you know, if the, if this market finds support on the 81.10 and then develop support on the 80, 81.20, uh, then you really need to run with that side of the market, and that means that you'd be shorting the euro at that stage because simply the, because the price is above the 81 here. So once you've got that sort of clear, then we can have a look at the uh, at the euro, and um, with the euro here as well from this from this low that we've had in place here, uh, yes, we, we could count five waves up here. So because we could count five waves, that means that after correction, we can you know get another five waves. And well, we've got that at this stage. So, um, but what that also means as well is it means that this can also be an A wave, a B wave, and a C wave, a corrective rally. So it could fail from here as well. So be very aware of that. And as the US dollar index climbs above the 81, and then the 81.10, and then the 81.20, well then you really want to be looking at shorting uh, this market uh, through here as well. And where that would come in too is that if this um, was an A and a B and a C, then if we have a look at the um, alternative count for um, for the euro on the daily chart here, it would be something like this. We would be looking at this down for one here, back for two here, down for three at this point, and back for four here. So that wave four would be the ABC that I've just mentioned, and it would be locking um, under the 
uh, under this level here, the 128, and um, yeah, and then moving down, so creating a new low through here into this block of uh, demand here, uh, support here. So that's what we can be looking at um, from there. So that's just you know just pointing that out. So you need to be on the right side at the, the right time. It's not that we always know what's going to happen, but if you're on the right side of the closest, largest number, um, then you've got half a silly chance of uh, being on the right side of uh, the market if it trends. So that's what we'd be looking at there. The Australian dollars come off a little bit as well. Uh, we expected it to come off as well. Um, so what we're sort of looking at through here is that um, this move up through here, we're counting this in five waves. So we'd be looking at a 61.8 retracement level uh, now that it's moved down through this, this distance here. So it's at the 50 at the moment, the 60's down here. There is a little gap here that sort of caught my eye. Um, that could be a bit of a target thing there. This, a little bit difficult to count all that structure into here, but I can identify this here as being a fourth wave in here, just the way that it looks. And um, so we could be looking at a little five wave structure to, to finish off uh, down, into, um, down into this area through here. So if that is the case there, then um, it's, if it's, well, look, if from this low here, if it went back up and found support on the 72, or well, then you'd scale in long from there and then looking to add on the, on the 80. If, however, and probably likely this um, one, two, three here, just retesting the 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 65 of subgroup two, then we'll see move down through here. So if you can count five waves down to here, and it drops below the midpoint, the 50, um, you know, to cover this gap here at the close of the 42, then um, you know, and then it gets back up here and finds support on the 50. Then look at going long from that point there. So um, as always, it's nice to get that dip lower first and th to check demand and then find support uh, on that area there. I just want to revisit the um, the S and P 500 again. Okay, just looking at the S and P 500 again, and just looking at the uh, the cash market. Um, it's got a slightly clearer count on it um, it's it's it seems quite sort of obvious on the on the cash market that we do have five waves up to this point here at the moment so we can look for a 61.8 retracement level back which should pretty much bring us into the uh, in, into the the lower part of subgroup two here so just have a quick look at that uh, here A bit lower into into this area through here about here so we can expect and um, it's it's probably good timing to expect as well some sort of a b and uh, c correction back down into this area here over the wednesday and uh, the thursday obviously is, is the holiday area through here before we see any pick up through here so um, just expect a deeper pullback into this uh, into this area through here for the s p 500 and that will also be the same for the us 30 as well so uh, that move in coming down through there that would be in three waves as well so uh, the the A wave is probably already in play there. That's probably five waves in here already. Um, so we're looking for a retracement there, and then another move down through here as well. So um, just keep an eye, eye on that there. So uh, easy on the uh, on on any new long positions today. In fact, we could probably even get a short position into uh, to hedge. Uh, any longs that we've got into the market as well, and then, <clears throat> and then uh, on the Friday we'll uh, reassess it to, um, to, uh, to to add to the long side again. <coughs> Excuse me. Alrighty. Well, good morning and good luck.